Hello, welcome. This is Business Now, reaching you from Ibra News Studio, Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up in a moment, Microsoft invests about $200 million in Nigeria through its newly unveiled African Development Center. And now the Monetary Policy Committee says massive oil theft threatened external reserves revenue. And Food and Agriculture Organization says escalation of the unfolding conflict in Ukraine will affect food and nutrition security in West Africa. And our Brent rises to $115 as European Union considers Russia or a ban. Thank you for joining us. I am Frank Komalape. We'll begin now uh, with the commodities market. Oil prices extended gains on Tuesday as some European Union members discussed a potential oil embargo on Russia and attacks by Yemen's Iran ally Houthi group on Saudi energy and water desalination facilities sent jitters through the market. Front month West Texas intermediate futures rose $2.28 to about 114 uh, four cent uh, barrel or NYMEX and Brent futures gain about $2.89 or about 2.5% to $118.51 a barrel on the intercontinental exchange in early trade. European Union foreign ministers are split on whether to join the United States in sanction in Russian oil with some countries including Germany arguing that the bloc is too dependent on Russia's fossil fuels. Prices are rallying in response to geopolitical concerns both in Ukraine and over attacks at Saudi Aramco site Moya Rade. Saudi Arabia has warned it would not bear responsibility for disruptions to global supply following escalating attacks on its facilities by Yemen's Houthi movement. The comments came after the group fired missiles and drones at facilities of the Saudi state oil firm over the weekend, causing a temporary drop in refining output and now the european union's foreign ministers disagreed on monday on whether and how to slap sanctions on russia's lucrative energy sector over its invasion of ukraine with germany saying the bloc was too dependent on russian oil to decide on embargo the european union and allies have already imposed hefty measures against russia including freezing its central bank's asset russia's siege and bombardment of Maripol port, which European Union foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell called a massive war crime, is increasing pressure for action. Some of those who want the European Union to go further showed impatience at the pace of talks after a meeting of European Union foreign ministers in Brussels. Germany and the Netherlands said the European Union was dependent on Russian oil and gas and could not cut itself off right now. And away from there now, back home here in Nigeria, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria on Monday decried the negative impact of the increase in oil theft on the economy. Specifically, it said the situation was affecting the accretion of the country's foreign exchange reserves and government revenue. The government, Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Mimifili, who is also the chairman of the NPC, disclosed this after the community, uh, committee's meeting in Abuja. He says while the rates were not retained by unanimous vote by the MPC members, he disclosed that three members voted to raise the NPR by 25 basis points as one member voted to raise the NPR by 50 basis points while six members voted to hold all parameters constant. Speaking on the impact of oil and on the economy, he said before the Russia-Ukraine war, the NPC was optimistic that the moderate decline in inflation was sustainable due to the positive impact of good harvest on price levels. And now some stakeholders have said the intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria in the rehabilitation of interfaces between Nigeria's transmission and distribution infrastructure to the tune of $250 million will help in stabilizing power delivery nationwide. Speaking on the matter recently, the Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliyu, stated that the APS Bank was already funding a $250 million project to ensure the rehabilitation 
of critical interfaces infrastructure between both segments to increase and stabilize power delivery. This, according to him, is in addition to the Siemens Presidential Power Initiative PPI that will bring in additional $2 billion or more to the transmission grid from the government. According to him, the interface project, along others already being embarked upon by TCN, brings ongoing projects into the transmission segment alone to 135 ongoing projects with 30 completed key substation projects and 12 transmission lines. Following the incessant collapse of Nigeria's national grid cutting off power supply to homes and businesses, an expert has raised the alarm on Nigeria's energy crisis. CEO Paisola Sidney Akimolado sounded the warning on Ibrand TV business show, Business Breakfast, earlier in the day. Akimolado stated that there was no end in sight to the energy crisis, noting that even, or even if the Jenkos go back to status quo, there's still a huge gap of infrastructure yet to be filled. It's a total energy crisis that we're seeing in the country. And if you ask me, it's the same problems we're talking. Now you, you just made uh, all the mention of all the facts, you know, as put out there. It, it, it was, you know, a blame game. It was like Adam saying no. It was Eve, Eve mm. saying no. It was the serpent. So what we're experiencing is not just uh, an energy crisis, but even the political crisis that, you know, that has also been, you know, has spilled into it. And of course, Managaria and, you know, uh, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, people not being transparent with all the issues that are going on in the energy sector. So you, 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 the, the question is, how, where do we go from here? When, when do we have a stop to all of these issues? When will Nigerians go to bed and say, we have power for our businesses, power for our homes, power to cook, power to fly our planes and all of that. There is no end in sight because just the same thing we experienced with the bad fraud that was imported into the country. NMPC kept saying it was some set of marketers. Those guys said, no, we have nothing to do with it. Just exactly the same thing we're seeing with this sort of crisis. Now MBET is saying, no, we're not owing you one point something trillion. Uh, the Jenkos are saying, no, this is the amount. So NBED is saying it on one hand, the Jenkos are saying on the other hand. I'm not too particular about the money, you know, the, the CBN says they've released. Mm -hmm. I'm particular about the fact that uh, 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 even if the Jenkos go back to normal, you know, let's say we go back to status quo, where the Jenkos are now, you know, generating the actual amount of power they've been generating over the time. Another big question is the infrastructure. We have about 13,000 megawatts of installed electricity, mm -hmm. but we can only push about 4,000, 4,500 megawatts. And now the domestic debt so by state government and the Federal Capital Territory Administration rose to 6.43 trillion naira at the end of 2021. This is according to Debt Management Office. According to the latest data from the Debt Management Office, where subnational domestic debt stock was 4.46 trillion naira, the subnational external debt stock was 1.97 trillion naira in 2021, with Lagos, Ogun, and Rivers becoming the three most indebted states with a combined domestic debt stock of about 1.56 trillion naira. The 4.46 trillion naira domestic debt represents 11.27% of the country's domestic debt stock of 23.7 trillion naira was of December 2021 up from 20.21 trillion naira in the previous year. Lagos owed 658.96 billion naira, Ogun with 232.6 billion naira, Rivers 225.5 billion, Aquaibum 214.6 and Emo 205.1 billion naira as of fourth quarter of 2021. And away from the now, the planned deduction of 242.5 billion naira fuel subsidy from the Federation account this month by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited is raising uncertainty among states as the Federation account allocation committee is scheduled to meet on Tuesday. According to report, commissioners for finance from the 36th state will meet today for the usual monthly allocation share meeting by the three tiers of government. Already, the NNPC had made it known to the state that it would deduct a total of 242.5 billion naira in March, as the amount spent on the subsidy of premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol. 
Subsidy deductions by the NNPC had often deduced or reduced the amount being shared by FAG, piling pressure on the finances of state government as they battle to meet their obligations, especially payment of salaries. And now, in order to clear the lingering queues and ensure energy security through efficient distribution of petroleum products, Ijegun Egba owners and operators association has committed to loading and supplying 40 trucks of premium motor spirit, otherwise called petrol, to the federal capital territory daily. Beginning Monday, the association also announced that its members collectively have 106 million liters of PMS in stock, which they have agreed to load and truck accordingly. According to the chairman of the association, Adebawale Ulujimi, the association in their recent resolution specifically resolved that in line with the transparent posture, they wish to put it on record that they collectively have approximately 106 million liters in stock and will load and truck same accordingly, and that all tank farms within the Jagun Egba axis are committed to loading and supplying 40 trucks of PMS per day to Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, to address and augment energy supply and energy security in Federal Capital Territory. Away from there now, Microsoft has invested about $200 million in Nigeria through its newly unveiled African Development Center in Lagos. The African Development Center is the premier engineering center for Microsoft. The center was created by Microsoft to serve as a base for African industry leaders to create local solutions with global scalability as well as provide employment opportunities and further enhance technological innovations on the continent of Africa. At the unveiling yesterday, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, who appreciated the effort of Microsoft for finding it worthy to establish such a facility in Nigeria, charged other private sector operators to do the same and support the federal government's digital economy programs. He commended Microsoft, stressing that the country is also strategic so the American firm going by the population being the gateway to Africa, a cosmopolitan nature of the country and the strategic geographical location of Nigeria. And in the meantime, the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development contributed about 7.8 billion naira to the country's gross domestic product last year. A director of artisanal and small-scale mining, Patrick Ojeka, has said. Ojeka said the cash was realized through its agencies. And the department adding that the mining cadastral office, an agency of the ministry, contributed substantially to the amount. Ojeka said mining cadastral office, an agency of the ministry, is saddled with managing and administering mineral titles, stating that the ministry's contribution to the GDP last year was unprecedented compared to its past contributions. According to him, the ministry will soon begin the capture to capture the biometrics of more than 2,000 artisanal miners that registered in cooperatives across the country. He said the essence of the biometrics capturing was to know their locations and monitor their operations. And away from there now, investors are set to earn over 780 billion naira as dividend from the 2021 financial year. So far, 16 companies across seven sectors, consumer goods, financial services, industrial goods, oil and gas, services, Healthcare and IT have earmarked a total of 782.19 billion naira as final dividend from last year's activities under the consumer goods sector. Vitaphone has paid about 1.87 billion naira, representing about 1.5 per, per share or 1 naira, 5 copper per share, while Dangote Sugar Refinery has proposed a final dividend of 12 naira of 12.14 billion naira, or about one naira per share, just as Nestle Nigeria declare a 20.21 billion naira dividend, or about 25 naira, five copper per share. Nascon Oil Industries and Nigerian breweries are set to pay a dividend of 1.06 billion naira and 9.69 billion naira, respectively, 40 copper per share and one naira, two copper per share, respectively. In the financial services sector, shareholders of United Capital, African Prudential Guarantee Trust Holding Company, Zenith Bank and United Bank for Africa will receive a total dividend of 9 billion naira, 1 billion naira, 79.4 billion naira, 
87.9 billion and 27.36 billion naira, respectively. If you're watching business now, we'll take a moment. We're we'll back with more news stories. Please stay with us. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin. The allure of a well-pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found a solution. And it's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil, and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family. If you're just joining us, this is Business Now coming to you live from our studios here in Lagos, Nigeria. On the African scene now, Food and Agriculture Organization has said escalation of the unfolding conflict in Ukraine will affect food and nutrition security in West Africa. FEO's Assistant Director General Abebe Hale Gabriel spoke on the need to join efforts for extraordinary thinking ways of doing business and effectiveness to fast-track delivery of SDGs. He said the challenge of youth unemployment and women's empowerment had been heightened because Africa was not taking sufficient advantage of the demographic dividend. Ukraine faces a grain revenue loss of $6 billion as the blockage of its port by Russian forces prevented from selling wheat and corn earmark for export by June, a senior industrial official said. Countries that rely on Ukraine for wheat include Egypt, Turkey, Yemen, and we need to find alternative supplies. Aid agencies have also won. Ukraine, a major producer of grain and oil seeds, exports about 98% of cereals and through its port, and only a fraction of by railway costs uh, are higher. Ukraine exported around $27 billion in agricultural products in 2021, making up about half of its total export income. And now South Africa Treasury is working on a proposal to cut M-Pesa transfer charges in a move that looks set to halt Safaricom's revenues from a service that makes more money than voice. Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukru Yatani told the Senate that there was need to make M-Pesa cheaper at a time when the mobile money platform has become deeply entrenched in Kenyans' business and daily lives. 
Yatani said the Treasury was aware of the rising concerns among consumers and small businesses over impasses transactions charges. Impasse accounted for about 99.9% .9 of the value of mobile money transactions underlining the entrenchment of the platform. Another source of concern with mobile money stems from the perception both by consumers and small businesses that the uh, range from digital technology are unfairly accruing to Safaricom uh, POC, said Mr. Yatan in his presentation to the Senate on Safaricom's dominance. Overall, the telco recorded revenues of about 264 billion shillings, yielding a net profit of 68.6 .6 billion shillings. Another foreign scene now, Brent crude, the global oil benchmark, appreciated in price on Monday, moving up by 7.3% or about $7.88 to $115 per barrel in early trade at Nigerian time as European Union. Nations consider joining the United States in a Russian uh, oil embargo. Industry figures show that the commodity has been gaining in price since about a week now as more nations impose sanctions on Russia over its war in Ukraine. The rise in crude oil prices also came after a weekend attack on Saudi Arabia oil facility. Global oil prices moved higher ahead of talks this week between the European Union government and the United States. President Joe Biden in a series of summits that aims to harden the West response to Moscow over its invasion of Ukraine. Earlier on Monday, Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vashchuk said there was no chance the country's forces would surrender in the besieged eastern port city of Mariupol. However, despite the rise in crude prices, Nigeria has not been able to fully take advantage of the development as the country has been missing it in production quota approved for the nation by OPEC. And our Swiss drug maker Novati said on Tuesday it was suspending capital investments, media advert advertisement and other promotional activities in Russia, but remained committed to providing access to its medicine there. Novati condemns the war in Ukraine, it said in a statement adding that why we remain committed to provide access to our medicine in Russia. We responsibly pause the initiation of new clinical trials and the enrollment of new study participant in existing trials, end quote. The mobile novelties follow similar steps by other drug makers following sanctions against Moscow for its invasion of Ukraine. All right, we'll go on commercial break now when we return. Amabalan Leadeshu will bring us more news update. Please stay tuned. Most people don't understand the magic of the perfect skin. The allure of a well pampered skin. We bounce from skincare products to skincare products. From spa to spa. Looking for that ideal solution. I found the solution. It's Blemiviv Skin Care and Spa. My name is Neil and I'm proud to be a part of the Blemiviv family.